Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to something new that I've started. Now, I've come up with this very creative idea of calling this series of videos something, listen to this, right? I've really had to think about the idea behind what I should call this series of videos. The day session vlog. How creative is that, right? I just thought that is the most easiest way to describe these videos. I am at Wind Whistle Course Fishery today and we're in search for just a bend in the rod to be honest but hopefully some carp and let's see if i could bring you some awesome action on the first vlog of the day session vlog So today I'm fishing on Keepers Lake. There are other lakes here and I will do videos on the other lakes here. So please go down and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from this venue. But I remember last year I came down here and one of my favorite, favorite sessions from last year was on this lake because I'm keeping it simple, very light gear, light float rod, match style setup. And you know, you can catch carp in here up to I think the biggest one in here is like 26 pounds but most of the fish in here are between sort of four and eight pounds so it's great fun like I say on a very very light match setup um, very small reel six pound line light float rod and just getting a bend in the rod is what it's all about today I'm with my uncle Rich and he's obviously with his partner Paula so hopefully between us we'll be able to catch a few fish there are roach rod bream eyed barbel common carp mirror carp ghost carp uh, tench, did I say tench? Pike and perch. So plenty to go at and uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a bend in the rod. Right, so I'm in the same swimming as I was last time, but I don't know if you can see my float out there at the tip of my finger. Oh, it's gone blurry now, hang on. The wind's not helping. It's dotted down quite a bit, but it's basically in line with that pole there's two poles there it's basically in line with that pole over there and what i like to do is when i plumb the depth um i plumb it so that i can see the float so i know how deep it is i know i'm on the bottom but then before i reel it in what i do is i leave it there as a marker so what i'll do is i'll get my bait which i'll show you in a minute and i'll throw it over the marker because i know that my float is where i want it to be so i'll get some bait in over the top then I know it's on the marker. Then when I cast out, I can hit that same spot every time. I know I'm plumbed and I know I've got bait on the marker. Does that make sense? Right, so here's the baiting approach. What I've got in here is um, some fruit and nut chops from Parker Baits. That's been glugged with the fruit and nut sauce. And I've also got bits of corn in there as well. I'm gonna use sweet corn as a hook bait. Other brands of sweet corn <laughs> is available. But what I might do is if this brings in too many smaller fish, too many silver fish, and I want to start catching carp, what I've also done is I've brought with me some 14 mil boilies just in case, fruit and nut as well. Obviously, if the smaller fish come in, what I can do is chop these in half, throw them over the top, and hopefully that'll bring the bigger fish in. But to start off with, I'm just going very simple. Remember, if you do want to get yourself 10% off Parker Baits with your first order, use coupon code South Coast Angler at checkout. Right, so if I just zoom in, you can see my float there, right in the middle of the shot. That is on the bottom. That's why it is dotted up higher, but obviously it's on the bottom. That is right on the bottom. It's just over four and a half foot. So what I'm going to do is use that marker, get some bait out, and I know I've got bait on that spot. Right, I've not put too much out there. I mean, I've put probably about five or six scoops out there, but where it's chopped, it's very fine bait. So that'll just sit on the bottom and create a dust. Um, and obviously now I'm gonna go back in over the top with a bit of corn. If I get no reaction, I can introduce more bait. Um, and then obviously later on down the line, once they're feeding, we can draw the carp in with those bigger boilies. That's the plan. Let's get fishing. Now I must admit, I was hoping for a quick bite. That hasn't happened. 
I think it's going to be a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be today. It is still mid-February, but it's not exactly cold. And when that sun comes out, it's lovely. The water's not... I mean, the water temperature's still quite chilly. But I thought we'd have had a fish or two by now. Maybe I underestimated it. But don't worry, I have got Billy here with me. He's watching on. Right, well, I've just shallowed the depth up by a few inches. And I've gone and caught a little skimmer. So we have to try and wade ourselves through to them and try and see if we can get through to the carp. There it goes, most gracious release ever. Right, well it didn't take long. Uncle Rich is in. All right, Paula. All right. Introduce Paula to the video, there you go. Hello. Hello, Paula. <laughs> and Uncle Rich, he's, uh, he's happy because he's got his new hat for Christmas. Let's have a look at your new hat. I can't oh, see it because of the sun. Just take me in a snag, mate, that has. Jimmy's taking you into a snag. Oh, crikey. Is it still there? Nah. Well, right hand rod went off. And uh, he's in the, well, he was into a fish and he's um, put him on a snag, so. It's too late. If you pick that up, that's a trouble. It doesn't look promising. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't landed, which is a shame because I think it was a carp. So, anyway, I just wanted to mention as well at wind whistle i will show you a little bit later on but they've got these huts here that you can hire out they've got caravans all down here so you can bring a caravan down do a bit of camping if you go on the website wind whistle course fishery website there's all information about the fishing the venue the lakes and things like that so go and check it out all right we've got fish number two in the net but unfortunately it's not a carp it is another bream but this one's not a skimmer it's actually <laughs> it's actually an all right size bream probably a pound and a half but there we go, at least the fish are on the feed, and I'll tell you what, as a match angler, you won't mind catching them all day, happy days, two fish, but I'll tell you what, that little bit of wind trickling across the lake is making it very, very hard for me to float fish, I'm holding bottom fine, but it's just hard to keep an eye on the float with it dotted down. Right, so Rogan Rich swim. Rich, what happened with that first fish that you uh, that you just lost? I don't know, mate. I've, I've sort of went off that tree, but obviously in a bit because of the roots and that. But hang on, let me get this side because the wind. Down the snag, mate. To be fair. Yeah. Um, I was up there a little bit, and uh, you sat here, weren't you? Yeah, sat here with I've, got bit, I've got a bit of a dodgy angle, so I can't move brilliant. To be fair, so I've got the rod. Um, I, it, I, I felt it. It, it had it done you. It was in a snag, it's too late. Yeah. Done. We think it went. Let me walk you around it because it's not far actually. Yeah, there's some. I, I told him to be careful to cut when he casts that around it, but to be fair, I think he cast clear of it. Um, but you can see, like, obviously the tree roots here. Look. Um, so I dread to think what it's like, sort of like along this bank here. But you can imagine. So obviously he's cast out there, the cops picked it up and, and dragged him into the snag. So. But. We're gonna find out what tactics he's using. So what you you got hair rigs on them both, haven't you? Yeah, I've got hair rigs on. I've got um, Monster Tiger Nut on the right hand rod. Yeah. And uh, Cream Wafter 15 mil on the left hand rod. Monster Tiger Nut and Cream Wafter, yeah, yeah. So and what's your baiting approach out if you put anything over the top of you're not fishing bags, are you? No, I've just got uh, yeah, well I've got just a mesh bag. Oh mesh bags, mesh yeah. Bag. Yeah. So, yeah, fair enough. Just not, not too much bait because we're winter still, so. And some good news. Paul has just come back from the bacon bat. Oh, yeah, lovely. Come back from the cafe. Beautiful bacon What did she bat. bring you? Bacon bat? Oh, bacon bat, mate, lovely. And she has some news for you? Yeah, and she's... Um, you don't have to give the date, but... No, but she's um, she's booked us one of the shepherd's huts from birth. Oh. Yeah, so you got, like I said earlier, you got these shepherd huts. Sorry for the wind noise, guys. I'm going to get a microphone um, to, to, you know, get some better audio. But yeah, look, like I was saying, they've got these two shepherd's huts, and I will walk around there. Um, I won't go in, obviously, because I don't know if there's, any, if there's anyone in there using them, but I'll take a little walk around there in a bit and show you them. So you're all booked up on there for a night, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, looking forward to that, mate. So Happy a day's fishing, then... Well, potentially two. Good. You could fish the Good day, day, stay in there the night, and then fish, fish the day the morning, after. Yeah. Right, well, I changed my float rod set up. I put on a bigger float. I dotted it higher in the water and it was still cheesing me off. <laughs> it really was. So we've got a solid bag on the go now. 
I'm changing over. Um, I paid for only one rod, so I'm gonna have to pack that rod away. But yeah, we're getting a solid bag out and I'm gonna fish it on that spot where I've had those bream. Well, I can't quite believe this. I never thought I'd see the day where I swap match angling that's always had a place in my heart for carp angling. I've now got rid of the match gear. I'm kind of disgusted with myself, look at this. I've managed to pull, um, oh, is that a fish? Something just moved around the edge of that left-hand pole. I think it was a fish. Nobody cast, by the looks of it. Yeah, I've uh, managed to dig out what I've got. So I had a couple of pank sticks um, and a rod rest. And I've actually taken um, one of my uncle's alarms. So <laughs> we've bodged it a little bit, but we've got a solid bag out there. Um, hopefully a bigger fish will come and pick that up. Honestly, it was just a nightmare trying to float fish with the wind. It was just casting was difficult. Watching the float was difficult. And now I can socialize. Oh, one more thing. There we go. <laughs> So here on Keepers Lake, there are 26 swims that you can book out and have a match on. It is bookable, the whole lake, the whole venue for a match. Um, but they've got great facilities here as well. They've got toilets, they've got a bait and tackle shop. Uh, they've got a cafe as well, which does great food, which I might have to pop into later on. But this uh, particular lake, Keepers Lake, is always good for a bend of a rod. It's always good for a bite. Although it's not been so prolific today, obviously fishing is fishing. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's a few more to come and uh, hopefully we can get into the carp. Well, these two lads over here, they must have been there about 15 minutes. They both, I think that guy on the right, he's had a couple of carp. He's got one now. The guy on the left, he's had one, but they hooked up both at the same time together and they don't, they've only been here about five minutes. Um, Rich was asking me, God, what a bloody noise from up there. Rich was asking me, he goes, oh, why do you think we've not had many carp then? And I think, I genuinely think that they've been following the wind. I know it's only a small pool and there's a lot of carp in here. But they do tend to follow the wind. And I said to him, maybe they're all down that end. But I am shocked that we've not caught any carp since we've been here. Unbelievable. But at least the sun is shining. That's something, isn't it? Well, as the old saying goes, it's just nice to be out, isn't it? It literally is fishing. That is fishing, isn't it? Unbelievable, it really is. Right, well, Rich is in. I reckon we've not had any bites because of all that ruckus that's going on over there, Rich, all the noise. But we're finally into... This ain't a bream, I know that. I do apologise for the noise, guys. Nice peaceful day fishing we've come for, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. don't mind about that. Yeah. And this is the right hand margin rod. Actually, Rich did say to me, do you reckon I should stick this one in the margin? It's not very big. They fight really well in there, actually. They, even the sort of two or three pound cart, they always fight really well. But at least it's not a bream. No. And actually, you've just put in the group chat that you've not had to use your land in that no. yet. <laughs> Blowing the fish into a full sense of security. Yeah. Right, well, here he is. It's a lovely scale pattern to him. <laughs> he's going to beat Rich up now. Yeah. But yeah, look at the scale pattern and the colours on that. He's got his winter colours on. What do we reckon that is, Rich? Probably... Four pound, maybe? Oh, I was going to think maybe four, five or six, I reckon. But I reckon. It's lovely. Let me stay there. I'll get some photos for you, mate. Right, what did you catch it on, Rich? Uh, that was on the um, tiger nut, 15 mil tiger nut wafter. Yeah, lovely. Look so, at that. Yeah, nice. colours as well. Like, it's real yellow as well here. That got a real winter colour on it, and the scale pattern's awesome. Look at the big, big one here, the big scale, scale here. Lovely, what well on, mate? Yeah, it's nice. Well, I must admit, I cannot believe that I've not had a carp. I cannot believe that between us we've had 
three fish. Oh, like I said, it's fish, doesn't it? You know, those boys are obviously in the right place and it just goes to show this time of year, no matter where you go, even on, you know, lakes where you feel like you should get a bend in a rod, which I really thought I was going to, which is one of the reasons why I came here. But it still turns out that it's not always as easy as it seems. So I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet today, suck it up and uh, forget about this one, I think. But at least we've had a, at least we've had a peaceful day. Oh, chopping wood over there. But yeah, no, honestly, Wind Whistle is it's always a place that I've I've been here a few times, and it's always a place that I enjoy coming to. Um, you know, like I say, I will be back on here in the summer. I will be doing videos on the other lakes here as well. But the session's not over yet. I think it will be in a couple of hours. But uh, I'm really hoping we can bring you one more fish. Hopefully, it'll be me because it'd be nice if I catch catch a carp. And um, yeah, hopefully it's a half decent one. But if not. I guess there's not a lot else to film. Wow, we're just starting to pack away, getting all our bits together. Oh, hang on, Rich, I can see it swirling in the pads, where the pads usually are. That's it, keep pressure on it. He's got him. I'll get my neck, because it's rubber. We're just packing away, and Rich said, surely my rod's gonna go off again. And lo and behold, it has, and he's in again. And we got another fish to show you. But I'm gonna use my neck, because this net's like a rubber mesh. So it just, obviously, the cotton sort of stuff just holds the water. But this dries quite easily. Any good? Oh, mirror. Yeah. Another mirror. Oh, that's nice. That's on a... What's... Oh, oh, crikey. Nearly hit me in the face. He's off, mate. What was that on? Uh, Torganut. Oh, Monster yeah. Torganut, 15 mil. Yeah, there you go. Off. They've been the bait of the day. I tell you what, I've got that all on camera. Yeah. <laughs> but all right as well. Eight pound maybe? It's a nice looking fish. Yeah, about eight pound maybe. I'm gutted you lost it really. Hey? I'm gutted you lost it. Yeah, never mind. Right. Yeah. right, well just before I end this video, I just want to quickly say that Rob from the Parker Bates group is actually joining me in a run around Bray's Nose 1. We're going to run five laps of B1, which I think is just over five miles and we're going to dress up um in silly costumes and it's all in aid for charity so what i'll do is i'll leave a link in the description if anybody wants to help and support and donate to these charities then you can go down and donate as much as well as little as a pound if you want to put a pound in if you don't want to that's fine but if you could share the word that would be great but yeah as i say i'll leave a link in the description rob and i will be running five miles dressed up in silly costumes to raise money for charity well unfortunately that's all she wrote i'm packed away i'm in the car i'm about to drive back home now Nice to be out on the bank. I mean, Rich did say, and he's right, it's better than staying in, watching TV all day, isn't it? Getting out, fresh air, nice winter, cold, fresh air. But honestly, I was expecting a few carp today. Um, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit upset, annoyed, gutted, frustrated, and embarrassed by the fact that I didn't catch any carp today. Um, but listen, like I say, it's fishing, isn't it? Who knows what's gonna happen? I've got some real good videos coming up soon as well. Um, and like I said, if you do wanna support me and Rob and Parker Bates and those charities, get down in the link uh, in the description. And if you can donate anything, I'd really appreciate it. If you can't, please share it on your socials so we can raise as much money as possible. But anyway, thank you for watching this one. The daily vlogs are back. Daily vlogs? Sorry, fortnightly day session vlogs, but yeah. Thanks for watching this one. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bish bash bosh.